AMD's finally lifted the lid off their next two GPUs. And believe it or not, that isn't even the biggest announcement that they're making. I'm going to go over that and more in this video. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. As of the recording of this video, the embargo has not been lifted, but of course, by the time you're watching it, it will have been lifted. With that said, because it isn't right now, that's why you have all of this admin at GamerMail.com, all this stuff that's basically so they can deter people from leaking. But either way, please bear with me on that as we go through this. And before we actually get to the two GPUs, we can see how AMD is planning to focus, or at least the type of market that they're focusing on with these cards. They make it known what they're targeting here, and that is 1440p displays. According to them, 1440p displays have been growing year over year by 44% on Steam, which I do have to admit is definitely a pretty massive number. So clearly this market is really important right now. And how do they plan on tackling it? Well, if you follow this channel, you definitely won't be surprised. It's the RX 7800 XT and 7700 XT. So of course, I've actually been going over this for quite a while because leaks have been coming out pretty much left and right, and I will say that they've pretty much been spot on. So of course, if you like to keep up with all things PC gaming hardware, make sure you subscribe to GamerMeld. Either way, as you can see here, there is a new design. It is very similar to the 7900 XT and 7900 XTX, except it comes with two fans instead of three. Just well, a very similar design. It's about what we would expect. I personally think it looks really cool, but of course to each their own. When it comes to specs, like I said, if you follow this channel, you're not going to be surprised here really at all. We, of course, do learn a little bit of new things, but a lot of this stuff we've actually been seeing. Starting things off, we have the RX 7800 XT, and this comes with 60 CUs. Like I said, this is what we've been hearing about for quite a while now. And as I've been saying when I hear this, it is a bit disappointing. Don't forget that the RX 6800 XT came with 72 CUs. Now, these are based on RDNA 3, which is, of course, better than RDNA 2, but going from 72 to 60, that really does suck. The boost clock is a little bit higher, but it is a bit disappointing. It also comes with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 across a 256-bit bus. Then we have the RX 7700 XT, and it comes with not much less, but 54 CUs, a game clock of 2,171 megahertz, and a boost of 2,544. And you'll notice that the game clock and boost clock are slightly higher on the 7700 XT than the 7800 XT. Of course, we've seen this before from AMD. The lower end models, because they have fewer CUs, are able to get slightly higher clocks. It does make sense. Also, the 7800 XT has a total board power of 263 watts, while the 7700 XT has a total board power of 245 watts. And of course, like the league suggested, it comes with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 across a 192-bit bus. And of course, we can talk about specs all day long, but really none of that matters. The only thing that does is performance. And here, well, I have to admit that once again, I am at least a little disappointed just with this slide, just because they aren't comparing this with last gen. You can see here when comparing the 7700 XT, they're not comparing it to the 6700 XT, they're comparing it to the 5700 XT. Why? Well, probably because it doesn't look all that great compared to last gen's model. Then they also compare it to Nvidia's RTX 2070 Super. Once again, not a very good comparison, though they're likely trying to target people who own those GPUs who didn't upgrade with last gen and are looking to potentially upgrade with current gen. Still, it looks a little odd to compare these to much older GPUs, but luckily they do compare it to the competition in the sense that this is how they see their card stacked up. And as you can see, they compare the RX 7800 XT to the RTX 4070. And as they mentioned, there is 33% more memory here, so there certainly is an advantage, especially as games are using more and more video memory. And as you can see, at least according to the games that AMD ran, now a lot of these are, you know, new titles, popular titles, things like that. So it does make sense. But as always, I suggest waiting for third party reviews. Still, you can see that at least in the vast majority of games that they show here, AMD's RX 7800 XT takes the lead. With that said, 
they do show a few games where they lose. Moving over to the 7700 XT, they're comparing this to the 4060 Ti. Now, unlike here, where the advantage is to the 7800 XT, you can see here that the 7700 XT is actually at a disadvantage when it comes at least to that 16 gigabyte model. Either way, when we compare the two GPUs, you can see that the 7700 XT does win out in quite a few games. Oh, and one thing to also point out is that they actually do show some games with ray tracing turned on, ray tracing turned on high. You can actually see some here as well. These are some of the titles that they lose at, but they actually do win at a few titles. But yeah, that's basically where they're positioning these two GPUs. But really, at least if you ask me, that isn't even the biggest announcement that we got. Moving on to what I consider to be the biggest announcement is their Fidelity FX Super Resolution 3, so FSR 3.0. Now, we obviously heard about this last year. It's nothing new. It's not all that surprising, but I'll tell you what is in just a minute. But quickly going over Super Resolution 3, they shared a few slides here. You can see we're talking 36 FPS all the way up to 122 FPS. This is FSR off, and then with FSR3 on performance mode. And of course, this is, we are talking frame generation. Then when we move over here, you can see once again, Forspoken, 64 FPS all the way up to 106 FPS. Obviously it's gonna be best to wait and see the tests on this, but the really, really big news actually doesn't even come from these slides. It comes with my contact with AMD. I actually emailed him to ask, well, it doesn't really say in any of this what exactly is supported on FSR3, what GPUs. Is this just the RX 7000 series, kind of like how NVIDIA only supports the RTX 4000 series, but what I got back, actually, let's see here. It says AMD FSR3 is an open technology that does not require machine learning hardware, allowing it to be supported on a broad range of products and platforms, including consoles. It is supported on AMD RDNA 1 architecture based graphics cards and newer. Now, it does say that they recommend using it with RDNA 2 and RDNA 3, but it is supported on RDNA 1, which would be RX 5700, GPUs like that. It even says that it's also supported on a broad range of competitor solutions, including NVIDIA GeForce RTX 20, 30, and 40 series graphics cards, meaning older GPUs that they currently refuse to support frame generation on will actually get frame generation, but not from NVIDIA. They're gonna get it from AMD. So a pretty wild turn of events. Now I will say that I have sent an email just double checking, is it AMD fluid motion frames? I may kind of do a jump cut here. Okay, to really quickly interject here, I actually did hear back from AMD and basically frame generation on FSR3 is 100% supported across these GPUs, but they're also offering frame generation on a driver level, and that is RX 7000 only. But FSR3, which seems to be the closest to NVIDIA's DLSS3, is supported on both NVIDIA GPUs and AMD GPUs, not just RX 7000, but starting with RDNA 1. If I hear something back before I release this video, but as of now, it definitely sounds like full-blown FSR3 is supported on older GPUs and NVIDIA GPUs. This, if you ask me, is really a huge deal just because it sort of blows like all the metrics NVIDIA has been trying to give with their new GPUs when they announce them saying, you know, three times the performance, things like that. It just kind of blows that completely out of the water because that was using frame generation, but now their older GPUs can get it with FSR3. Of course, with that said, that's only in games that will support FSR3. And on that note, they have already announced two games that are coming out for Spoken. Well, this game is already out, of course, but for Spoken, something not too many people are really all that excited about Immortals. So as of right now, we're only looking at two games, but they did announce future ones. This are, these are just gonna be like the ones that are coming very soon. 
But then they also have Cyberpunk 2077, Avatar, you know, Forspoken, quite a few games here. Hopefully we will see more. And really quickly on that note, they also discussed uh, Hyper RX. Once again, this is more or less a one click solution that kind of tries to make it easier rather than having to deal with all of these different technologies. Which one do I want? And it just kind of does what AMD suggests basically. Now, obviously they are late on their release of when they said, but I do believe that they had mentioned that it was coming sometime in September. So not too far away as long as I'm right about that. I am pretty sure, but either way, that is another thing. And finally, or actually right before I get to that, they also mentioned that the 7700 XC and 7800 XC offer AV1 in code. And finally, when it comes to pricing, I don't know. So availability is September 6th, but as you can see here in our briefing and everything with them, they did not give us price. They said that we should hear more about it soon, but I really don't know when. Maybe they will announce the price uh, when this video goes live, but at least as of now, I'm really not sure. And the only reason for that is likely because AMD still isn't really sure. So unfortunately, I do not have that information, but the cards will become available on September 6th. So while that does it for today, are you excited for AMD's next two GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.